Yes, surrender to God. You can symbolize God as, as a masculine. That might be helpful in your particular, in this particular exercise or from this angle. Sweet. So if you picture God as the masculine, the omnipresent, all encompassing, ever safe, ever loving, ever fierce, ever protective, ever guiding, ever supportive, ever providing, all encompassing masculine force of all that is. And you surrender to that image, to that sense, to that feeling that can definitely assist you. And it would align your energies. It would put you in a more healthy feminine state that's more balanced. It would take away the unnatural false masculine qualities that perhaps you have trained into your system as a compensatory reaction to the way society is and what you've taught, been taught and all that stuff. So in the, at least in the privacy of your own internal reality, you can fully surrender safely to your sense, your symbol of God, as this omnipresent, ever reliable, trustworthy, masculine force that's got everything covered for you. And if you practice that, the energies are the same. They will open up. This will allow you on a relative level to attract more balanced male forces into your life where you can then begin to practice that, exercise that and enjoy that on a physical level. And of course, a relational, emotional, spiritual level. Yeah, exactly. I want to really be a feminine, pure, that's what. Yes, okay, a, lot so. of, a lot of females desire that, but don't know exactly how to do that in this society. Mm. And I don't blame them for that, but it is important that they find a way to do that for the sake of all of us. And, uh, and it's important for the males to become <clears throat> more truly and holistically masculine, mm -hmm. which will both will support each other in making it easier. The feminine being purely feminine will make it easier for the masculine to be truly masculine. And the masculine being truly masculine will make it easier and safer for the feminine to be truly feminine. So I do believe in those polarities up to a certain density, up to a certain level of consciousness that applies. Beyond that, there's only genderless unity and pure life force and so forth. But on many levels of our day-to-day -day experience, many levels of consciousness, there is a polarity between masculine and feminine force. At least that's what we've called it, the pluses and the minuses. And the dance between them does produce the greatest electricity, the greatest ability to do work, the greatest ability to ascend and to transform and to transmute and to alchemize. So I do believe in the classic image of masculine and feminine, but it needs to be balanced. It needs to be made clear and enlightened and, and spiritual so that it can actually be a true balance and not uh, this distorted thing that we see often around us today. But if you can find the courage to practice this with God in the privacy of your own metaphysical inner reality, it doesn't have to include any physical man per se. Also don't reject it. Don't turn God into an image and, and say all men are, are bad or are insufficient and only God matters. Try to, from that God state, include everything in your devotion, everything in your surrender. However, the first and foremost is that you have the easiest way to do this probably is for you to have an image, a sense, a symbol of God as this all pervasive, all supportive, masculine, 100% pure, trustworthy, reliable force and to surrender to that. That will get you into the energy of what surrender is, what it truly feels like, devotion to God and so forth. And that will put you, restore you to your true feminine essence. And it will reveal to you the masculine traits that you've adopted that may not be it's not bad to have some masculine balance in you as a woman not at all but you will see where you have sort of toxic or copied masculine traits because of societal conditioning where they are distorted and they these will fall away when you find a trustworthy masculine and i suggest you start with god not at the expense or rejection of a masculine men or men in general, but as an initial starting point to deepen your surrender, to trust your femininity, and to activate that energy, which is healing for this planet and healing for you. And then the law of attraction will bring you, practice partner or partners, to exercise this with, to apply this to the human level as well, and to uh, hopefully balance out yourself and the earth in this particular way. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So like the problem that I had yesterday, that just because it's a man and I didn't surrender, I, it was making me feeling li- like guilty, like uh, I should surrender, but you have to well, choose. Well, definitely not. Let me just be clear on this. Who? Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately. Yes. I, I, <clears throat> I would not feel good about saying just surrender to every male that, <laughs> that you like, it's a man and he's going to kill me now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, use your, <laughs> still use your <laughs> discernment. But that's why I say start practicing this in the privacy, in the, in the safety of your own relationship to God. Okay. Because you, energy and the universe and your brain, they don't recognize the difference. What matters is that you learn to activate that energy. And when you do that, you will begin to attract males that are a closer and closer representation of the pure feminine that you're radiating out. They will find that a complementary force that law of attraction will bring these males to you that are ready to kind of play with that. Doesn't mean they're 100% perfect. Doesn't mean they're 100% an embodiment of what I'd like to call the Omega men. Maybe more on that later. Bit of a new concept, but but they will be closer to that representation and they will allow you to learn and to practice and to have fun and to enjoy and to, you know, learn more and ascent more. Um, but it's definitely not, I've never recommended and never will that a woman just blindly surrenders to any, uh, <laughs> any male that makes an advance on her. So okay. please don't feel guilty for not surrendering. Now, if it was a beautiful opportunity and there was a lot of synchronicity and there was a lot of excitement involved and there was a pure resonance there and you still blocked it out, then yes, that is a blockage in you to look at. But if it was just some random, yeah. random guard at the, uh, by well, a random guy at the bar, <laughs> random by at the mm-hmm. car, then um, yeah, please don't feel guilty about that. But was it love attracted into your, of course, everything is, but was it like a resonance? No, 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 completely. No, he was out of his mind. He was uh, mad. He was just like, boom. And I was like, no, like, yeah, good, good choice. <laughs> like, uh, it was just like, boom. <clears throat> no, what you, what you can do, but first things first is like, definitely don't, quote unquote, surrender to that, at least not on a relative level. Now, what you can do with practice is from the background, from that non-dual divine understanding, you can still send complete love to that entity, to that being, but it's an impersonal love. And you could say that's a surrender to the God in him, even though the human is very confused, right? So you can still send that love. You can, in that sense, you can surrender to every person that you meet, male or female, You can surrender to the God in them, but that doesn't mean on a relative level that you engage with them physically or that you allow them into your house and so forth. So you still want to use discernment on the human level, but from the depths of your heart, you can still send them love while you reject their presence in your physical. You can walk away and send them love in your heart from your heart. Does that make sense? I did actually. I did actually. And also when I meditate today, I was sending so much love to that because, you know, it's work and everything, you know. And so I just, I did actually, I did not, not really. Okay. So I I am uh, super clear. Thank you for, for that. Like what a masculine energy is like is uh this supportive this clear this uh, okay now the feminine how h- how it feels the feminine to <clears throat> energy to you to the feminine itself mm. let me change gender real quick one second At the high state it feels like being a re- receiver or receptacle for god's energy receiving God's energy. And I say at the highest level, because this means that in your heart of hearts, you actually equate yourself to being equal to God in power, in worthiness and deservability. So at the highest level, there's no seeking for anything. There is a total receptivity or loving embrace 
of whatever comes your way, knowing yourself as God, you could say as the divine feminine aspect of a God, and you are actually receiving God itself and allowing the impregnation of creation to occur in your metaphysical womb, in other words, in your receptivity. That receptivity comes from an unshakable confidence or courage. Well, not even courage. Courage initially, but once the goal has been accomplished, it means that in the back of your mind, you equal yourself to God, maybe even higher than God, in a way, because you're receiving God. So it's the experience of being so vast, being so sure, being so indestructible that there's complete receptivity. And we could call this vulnerability or openness, but there is really nothing vulnerable about it at the highest level. The initial steps might feel vulnerable, but I'm just starting from the highest level, which is a fully realized a feminine presence would have no fear would not be seeking for that support in fact she would be the support and in her receiving of god in all of its manifestations in all of its desire to create to produce creation in being a receiving force of that a receptacle sounds a little weird but 